photos, videos, objects, sounds, and light. The myriad stuff, both real and virtual, in our daily lives. It's all the material for Sarah Z, an artist who takes this information overload and gives it a new shape. Jeffrey Brown takes a look for our arts and culture series, Canvas. At New York's Guggenheim Museum right now, you can walk around and into an artwork by Sarah Z and be taken by more than a few surprises. I know, I didn't, that wasn't on purpose, but I didn't peel it off. We didn't have time. Oh, so studio ladder, yes. pliers, yes. houseplant. I yeah. mean, I can just go on and on. Yeah, yeah. But anything goes, in a sense. So anything goes, but, you know, everything is necessary. In our terms, these works are installations or sculptures. More colorfully, some have seen an exploded hardware store or the contents of an iPhone spilled out into space. All the millions of images in our lives turned into objects, pieces of constructions that may hold together but may break apart. I like dismantling the artwork and having it seep into the, the, uh, the architecture, the audience, seep into each other. So these boundaries, these frames, they get blurred because I think that's the way we're experiencing life. You know, we can walk down the street and watch a movie. You know, so we're looking up at the sky and then we're looking down and then we're seeing a person. Um, and so that intersection of, of the way we experience time, the way we experience space is changing. And I'm interested in how we mark what is important, what is meaningful with this new language. The exhibition is titled Time Lapse. And in some works, like one called Timekeeper, the references to marking time are overt. A metronome, clocks in different cities, set amid a kind of giant science experiment of objects, small projectors, videos, sounds, lights. There's a different way to experience time in time zero. A large abstract painting and a strange mirror version of it cut into pieces and reassembled beneath the original. Everywhere you turn in her work, images of images. It might be on our screens, on our walks, or in our heads. The number of images that are around us is becomes the volume on that has turned so high that the images that are in our head, which happen while we're dreaming, while we're imagining, while we're hoping. When I look at you, I can picture like seeing you on television. That's in my head. So I'm seeing these images at the same time. You know, interior images are being merged all the time with exterior images. So that's something I'm interested in people thinking about. Z, now 54, grew up in Boston. Her Chinese-born father, an architect, her mother, a schoolteacher. She's received a MacArthur Fellowship, represented the U.S. at the 2013 Venice Biennale, completed major commissions in public spaces such as New York's LaGuardia Airport and Highline Park, and is exhibited in museums around the world. At the Guggenheim, she's created site-specific works that play off and with Frank Lloyd Wright's landmark architectural spiral, the curved bays where art is exhibited, and the sloping ramps that can disorient viewers. You can see actually you know, how off balance we are. Usually things like this would be covered up in the museum, but I wanted you to really see like this is the first step to leveling the piece so you can really understand that even your body is always at an angle at this space. Uh -huh. um, and then when you move around... I mean, so we see the arc, we see the construction. Exactly. It's, it's not hidden. Nothing is hidden. She's also offered new sight lines of the spectacular oculus at the top of the dome and hung a pendulum that descends to a small fountain in the atrium. And she's filled the space with everyday objects, including appliances. Materials you're more likely to find at Home Depot or in your own home than in a museum. I think of material as a palette, a palette of, of daily life. Um, and a so palette of daily life. I'm interested in the line being blurred between, between what's outside the museum and in the museum. So you start to see the artistry in the world. So why do you like that? I mean, why are you seeking that? I think it's the way we experience life. There isn't a boundary, it isn't framed to marry the everyday experience with the profound. So for me, many things, I'm interested in having something very profound happening next to something very, very, very um, mundane. So you can look up and see, you know, um, a volcano go. And then you can look down and you can just see a piece of paint on the floor. And that you should shift between those things. Because I do think a lot of our pro moments of profundity or moments of joy come at times we least expect. I mean, the other obvious question is, how do you know when it's finished? Right. 
How do you know when you're done? For me, when it's done, is right, it's right at the edge of feeling like it's coming together, but it could also fall apart. It's this teetering moment of change. We're always in that moment, right? We're somewhere between, we have, time is finite for us. We know that. And to highlight, to make that moment of present um, really powerful as you stand in front of something, is, is I think, um, is, is for me what, why I am you know, so interested in, in seeing art. You know, an artwork is always, it's a time traveler, it's a capsule. It tells us what it means to be human, both in the past, in the present, and potentially what it might be like in the future. Sarah Z's time-lapse exhibition is up through September 10th. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the Guggenheim Museum in New York.